right? So always, you always uncovering amazing things that you notice in Tanakh. I found, for example, today when I was looking at this, a pasuk where you have ten words connected with the trump. Normally, if disconnected and connected with trumps, I think this is the longest string of words that is in the entire Tanakh. It's in the last simon of Yecheskel, where you have, right? You guys remember disconnected and connected with trump. So there's a lot of munachs. Or even before, let's say, uh, a pazer or tzlisha gedola, you could have many things. So this pasuk in, right at the beginning of Simon Kaftet, which is in the middle of chapter 47, this uh, river that's going to start flowing from the temple and head toward the north. So you have 10 straight words there that are connected. So it says here, starting in chapter 43, uh, it says how to dedicate the new temple. And what they're going to do on day one, on day two, and day eight says, uh, ben Adam Now, son of man, tell the people about this new temple. And we call They'll become ashamed of all their sins. They'll start measuring out the plans. And then he says, here's what you're going to do. Uh, here's the things. He said to me, son of man. So said the Lord God, these are the enactments of the altar, the day it shall be made, in order to burn upon it a burnt offering and to throw upon it blood. The first day is one bull as a burnt offer, as a sin offering. And he says what you do all the next seven days. It's a little bit ambiguous there, is it? day one, then days two through eight, or is it just day one and days two through seven? Okay, so it's a little bit ambiguous there, and there's more uh, examples. Uh, later in a parak, it says what they do on the first of Nisan, there's going to be a dedication, also korbanos, which are not really matching anything that we've seen in the Torah, and also ratios of wine, oil, and flour that are not exactly fitting with the Torah. So that's what Ram was discussing now. Which are all interesting. Those are inauguration offerings, unique inauguration offerings, like Kazeris Akasov one time. And these do not apply forever. That's why the Rambam says, he said before, he can't change these. Lo Gorim, Lo says, yeah, but the Navi has already declared. And where they're going to do things a little bit differently. A one time, you know, a one off deal. Ella. The Navi is already described what they're supposed to do when they dedicate the temple in the times of the Messiah, third temple. Fine. And that seems to be, by the way, uh, a shot in the Gemara there. And Rambam continues, he says here, And just like the Nisim, Moses' time, Moses' own. Uh, Moses' brother's brother-in-law was involved in this. Nachshon. At Chanukah Mizbeach, they had a whole bunch of korbanot that don't seem to fit any usual ratios, right? Devarim she'en kamutan l'derot. There's nothing like them that's decreed by the Torah to do forever. They krivu b'shabbat. And they brought this personal sacrifice on Shabbos. Okay? Apparently, there was, it was over a course of 12 days. So at least one of those days was Shabbos, right? So too, this Nasi will bring a korban uh, on Shabbos, a special korban for an individual on Shabbos, and uh, that's what's described there. There's actually a pasuk here which is quite ambiguous. You look over here; it says in uh, Memhe, uh, Parak Memhe, uh, pasuk uh, Zion. This Nasi will get a special lot, plot of land. Apparently it's talking about the future king. He's called the Nasi in, in Yechezkel. And then it says, this is the Haftarah for one of the special parches. I think it's the Haftarah for the uh, Chodesh. Yeah, Chodesh. I was thinking, I was thinking Shkalim, but that's talking about the story that actually happened in first temple times. Uh, Yoash, when he first became king in the special fund for the temple. Kol ha'amar, it's Yuel HaTramazot, want to see Israel. Everybody will have a piece of this, and also the Nasi. Da'al Nasi yeh ha'olot v'amincha v'aneseh. It will be the Nasi's responsibility to bring the burnt offering and the meal offering and the libation. V'achagim u'vechodashim v'ashabatot, v'chol mo'adei beit Yisrael. On new moons, Shabbos, all the mo'adei beit Yisrael, all the holidays, including Passover. Okay? 
you didn't sign out. Okay, fine. No, don't worry, we're still we're still with everybody. He will make these sacrifices. So, wait a minute. Are you saying the Nasi will sponsor all the korbanos of the Muadim? Because normally we have the, the din is, it's taken from Machatz. It's a shekel piece for all the korbanos. But now the Navi seems to be saying the Nasi is going to take monetary responsibility to bring all these korbanos on all these special days. A little bit strange. Will he do the service himself? So there are some who say, that uh, the high priest and others say the king. So Rashi says, in some of these places, the Nasi refers to the high priest. So others say it's the king. It means that the king will pay. That's the Mitsudos. Okay? So, and then it says, the next Parsha says, mm-hmm. On the first day of Nisan, they have a special offering, once again, a bull to purify everything or inaugurate everything. So, yeah, there, you see that there's some strange... Uh, Things. By strange, I don't mean anything wrong with that. I'm just saying it's not what the Torah commands for all the time. And by the way, you know that there was some controversy with the book of Yechezkel. So they once say in the Nignaz, you know, it says things against the Torah. It says that the Kohanim have to cut their hair certain ways. It seems to be changing Allah. No, you don't understand it right. You have to understand Yechezkel. Take some time. There are Mitharshim who explain what Yechezkel is saying. And uh, like I said, even the, the plans for the Third Temple, there's only a lot of different machlokas in about how that's supposed to look. The Rambam said at the beginning of this uh, whole treatise, he said, the second temple was built to the specifications of Yechezkel, at least the ones that they understood how to do. That which was they understand from Yechezkel, they just left like in the first temple. All right? So that's what they did. They we were always thinking, and this is uh, something else we should say. In the book of Ezra, it also says there were two times they did a Hanukkah. One, when they actually built the temple, and two, when Ezra showed up. Ezra, unlike the the, the yeshiva shism that Ezra built the second temple. I remember how many times I used to hear Ezra built the second temple. 100% against what it says in Ezra's own book, that Ezra was, was a latecomer. It was built by others, and he showed up afterwards, according to Sonsino, significantly later. They know Agim Ludorot, and those are not done any time else. Aval, Devarim Ano Agim Ludorot, Heim Devarim Torah Shepirashnu, what you're always supposed to do forever, that's what the Torah says, like we just explained, Shemot said, Tiku Mi Pimo Sharbenu. As they have copied, sometimes copy doesn't mean copy on a piece of paper, hand, you know, writing it down. It means that they repeated from him. Oral tradition. Don't add, don't subtract. Now, you might notice there's a note over here. Uh, according to Rashi in Menachos that Daphne mentioned, 45, Rashi seems to equate the two. He says that, I'll read what it says. The way Rashi, at least people read the Sugyu and Rashi, is that the what is described in Sefer Yechezkel is what they did in Sefer Ezra. Yechezkel said, here's how you should inaugurate the temple, and they actually did that in Ezra's time also. But the problem with that shot in Rashi is, here, where does Rashi say this? You can look at, I, I made a note over here, it's Rashi to Yechezkel Membe's uh, Kaf Aleph, and uh, they did this in Ezra's time, and also to 4322. Uh, some say, no, let's well, Lavo, it should be in the future. And you look at Radak also, uh, what's here in Yechezkel is certainly not what happened in Ezra's time, okay? And uh, Radak even offers that Yechezkel himself, because as you shall do this and you shall do that, it, God was telling Yechezkel, you're, you're already a Kohen, you're going to be resurrected, and you will serve in the third temple, and this will be the korban that you yourself will do in that time. That's what Radak is suggesting. But if you notice, there's a problem here with the Radak, like he brings it up, um, uh, Cheskel's altar is paneled with timber, which is development on the soil, and undressed stone earlier altars. A timber paneled altar suggests nominal burnt sacrifice. Is this reasonable to assume this? Uh, no, because uh, I don't know if it's necessarily paneled. Maybe it means like a frame. The first altar for the Mishkan was built out of cedar wood or acacia wood, depending on how, which tradition you're following. It says Atsei Shitim, right? So we say it means it means cedar. So I'm saying no, it means Shitim means actual acacia. The point is, it was then covered in copper. Uh, sorry, bronze. It was pure copper. They use bronze, yeah. a copper alloy. So if it says that they're using some sort of wood in, in, in that altar, you know, they mean that you know it has wood as part of the, the framing and all that. It doesn't mean that there's an actual wood because you built the top of an altar with wood. It's not going to survive the first day of uh, sacrifice. You know, there's been coals on wood don't really, you know, don't really survive there. So yeah, that's that's they that's what they assume. Okay, so let's get back into this. Uh, so why, why do I mention this? Because 
if you read Pshat and Rashi in that in Menachos there, he seems to equate these two korbanos. Ramba mentions what happened, what's going to happen is described Sefer Cheskel. That's Mashiach times, and what they did in Ezra's time is also this. But Rashi seems to equate the two. Okay, uh, but the Gemara seems to also the bottom line. Of the Gemara seems to follow Rashi. You know, Rashi gives Pshat and the Gemara that that seems very well. So it's a good caution. It's a good caution. So the Gemara seems to say that which was brought in. Ezra's time was following what Yechezkel told him to do. Yechezkel lived before Ezra. But it doesn't, it just doesn't match. You, you read these numbers and what they brought, and it doesn't, doesn't match. So uh, here's a retort. Um, yeah, so that, that doesn't, Gemara seemed to follow Rashi below. Yeah, but still it doesn't match. Rashi says they should match, but they don't. So the answer given, I found the, the Grizz says, that's the, the, the Brisker Rav, okay? the Rabbi Salvechik's uncle. So he says, if you look in base of the 1 4, what we just said here, they built the temple as well they could to match Yechezkel's vision, but not exactly. I'll, I'll read you exactly what Rambam says there. The temple that Solomon built, that's before Shin Malachin. Very clearly what it means. You can still see pictures. The future temple that will be built. In those described in Yechezkel. It's not explicit. It's not explained well. Very ambiguous. The men of the second temple time. When they built the temple in the times of Ezra. Doesn't say Ezra built mm-hmm. it. They built like Solomon's temple. And like that which was explicit in Yechezkel. For example, that they put a second floor on in the second temple. The first temple didn't have a second floor. And it had a high ceiling. And it had windows. But we actually saw that there's a whole second floor of the of the second temple, big empty room that just so they have access, you know, the the the, the Kodesh Kedushim with the elevator. But it was a nice ornamental room that apparently was just like the other room, just didn't have any service there. Okay, so he says here, if you look there, just like the second temple was built like the one envisioned by Yechezkel, so too were the milum of the second temple. That is when they when in Ezra's time when they offered the milum of the second temple, they did it. Almost like the way Yechezkel described. They were trying to get uh, approach what Yechezkel said. But I don't think this is such a good comparison because they couldn't understand how to build the third temple because this doesn't make sense to them. Yechezkel wasn't around to explain it to him what he meant. So they built the second temple as best they could like the third temple was intended to be. Mm-hmm. But the korbanos that Yechezkel describes are very explicit. There's no way they could have gotten that wrong. So there is another answer. The Gemara is not saying that Yechezkel describes how they eventually uh, inaugurated the second temple. Rather, the Gemara is saying that just like the second temple had uniquely luim, so too will the third. Make it read that in the Gemara. That's what Rashi's, Rashi and the Gemara seems to be saying. Just like the Ezekiel says, uh, just like the second temple had uniquely luim, so too the third temple have uniquely luim. I think that shot works in the Gemara very well. We're in the Gemara Masech, this, uh, it says, uh, once again, uh, Menach was 45, and I think that that's a good answer. Okay, That they were, it's not that they were trying to do exactly as Echezkel said, is that Heyo's Yechezkel says, here's how you inaugurate the temple with the sacrifices. So they had a whole Rashel also in their time to inaugurate with certain sacrifices, but didn't necessarily match what Yechezkel described they're going to be doing. So this is a, a, an important misconception that we need to clear up. What is that? Uh, people didn't build the second temple. Like I, I grew up thinking through Medras says, and you read the Madrashim, everybody knew anything. Yosef knew the rest of Jewish history. Yosef knew that how they leave Egypt. Yaakov knew that the temple would be destroyed. David Melch knew this would be destroyed, and Shlomo Melch knew the temple would be destroyed. They were aware of history before it happened. And when they built the second temple, they knew it would be destroyed, right? They're, they knew, how many Midrashim have you seen like that? They, they knew, that, yeah, a whole bunch of history. So that's that's a Midrashic idea. That's, that's not historical truth. The misconception is they didn't build the second temple thinking it would get destroyed and be replaced. That was not the intention. Mm-hmm. They were building the second temple, saying that with the idea that if we work hard enough, this is the beginning of an ultimate redemption. And I can imagine that even, let's say, late uh, toward Herodian times even, there were some bright spots on the horizon. Like I, like I mentioned, uh, the temple had just been rebuilt. It had been like, that is that, it, it's not that it was destroyed in the Horban, it's that there was a whole gigantic makeover to make it the most beautiful place on in the Roman world. You know, And people came from far and wide to see God. We mentioned there was there were foreign kings and his mother, Helene, Queen Helene, 
was not the queen of, of Jews, and yeah. she did not reign in Jerusalem. She was queen of uh, Adiabina, Hadyav. That's somewhere in Turkey. Okay, and that, that was a big place. There were a lot of Jews there. It's definitely that foreign monarchs convert to Judaism. It says, uh, who is it? Uh, uh, Kimchis. All her all her uh, sons served in the Kuna Gadola. One son was disqualified right before Yom Kippur because he was uh, reading uh, some dignitaries. One of them was an Arab king. Hmm? An Arab king came to Jerusalem to pay homage. Okay? So you can imagine, the king of Mecca shows up and uh, he was talking to the Kohen Gadol and I guess they, they, the Humra is uh, every every guy is considered a zav, and his rope is matame. So he is mm. talking to him. It's a zero. So you know, just a little spit gone. The queen goes, "Oh, you're disqualified for seven days and three days from him kipper." So his brother had to be had to do the service instead of him. So in that time, the temple was once again the center of the Jewish world. Yes, there was a diaspora, and perhaps Agrippus the, the 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 first was an okay guy, you know, because all liked him. So they could have seen that things would get better if we would just have. A king who's slightly better. If we'd have a Davidic monarch on 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 here, and we could encourage Jews to you know to make Aliyah. This is before the last forty years that of the temple stood. You could see that they were on, they were basically on the cusp of a messianic era. It could have gone it could have gone way differently than it did. Of course, things didn't go that way. There's an, even a Corbin they got worse. And you should know, as we figured out last week, we're doing a lot better than they were, let's say, three hundred years ago, five hundred years ago, right? We're much better off than Rashi and Rambam were. Rambam couldn't find a minion with which to daven here in Eretz Israel. And now Jerusalem's a Jewish city. And at least there's a minion on the Harabais. Yeah, they're not, they don't let us do Jewish things. There's no safer Torah. There's no Talisman to fill in. But we're getting there. We, we, we have seen improvements in our own days. And the more of us who get together, we see better improvements. So really, they wanted it to become the final temple. So you see also the Kesav Mishnah to Beis of Bechira there, 1 4. He describes an idea like this. Uh, I really think that that's something that we have to we have to understand. Like the Rambam says in Chuva, let's just take a muscle. You have to imagine that the next thing you're going to do is going to tilt the scales, right? The next of area you do could be the one that's machria. That's the one that tilts it. Everything's just even. The entire the entire army scroll is right right now perfectly balanced. You know, we don't know if their zechuyos are better than the avonos. And what happens? The next mitzvah you do can be the deciding factor, right? That might not be the actual case, literally, but you have to think that way so that you make sure to make the good decision. Hold on, we have a question. So the third temple not be a synthesis of details in chapters 1 to 4 as described in the temple of Jerusalem? Well, this is not what expected. Has Mahon Shilu considered the structure? I don't know. I think it's up to the whoever's the whoever's in charge of the temple construction. And the Messiah should show up and do this. They'll get to make these decisions, or a Sanhedrin will make these decisions. Uh, I don't know. I've seen so many different uh, model drawings by Jewish scholars about what the temple is supposed to look like. Every good co- every good commentary on Yechezkel has its own drawing, like it's the Groz drawing and all that. You've seen a few. Ryan McIver has a nice book over there that I think it's very nice. I don't know. Okay. I don't know if Rabbi Rahim is concerned this at all. I don't know what his opinion is on anything. There was something this week I wanted to know what his opinion was, and I, I didn't ask him. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. If you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Israel or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement, please email us at office at machonchilo.org.